Hello everyone, my name is Pixlriffs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. Today we're going to go out on a trip. We're going to take our mule out in this direction, I think, which is south. There we go. I, I still get a little bit confused about the compass directions. I always think of the way I leave my house as being north, and that completely confuses me when it comes to directions. But it's pretty easy. If the sun's rising on my left, I'm facing south. So we are going to take our mule out in the southerly direction and see what we can find out there. Because I haven't really explored out there to the south this way down river much further than the dark oak forests that are down there so i would really like to see what's out in that direction and i'm hoping that what we're going to find is a mountain because we haven't really found any mountains it's the caves and cliffs update mountains are one of the biggest new features to be added in minecraft 1.18 and i really feel like we haven't seen everything mountains have to offer so i'll briefly recap what i did in between episodes which was really just to go back to that huge iron vein and grab a bunch more of the raw iron our iron farm has also been working really hard and i've been converting all of that into iron blocks so in the meantime it's almost caught up with the amount of iron i've been able to get out of that vein just from you know me pottering around talking about bees and doing all of the other stuff so i think it's high time that we go out on a journey and leave our iron farm to do its thing and maybe when we come back we'll do some other bits and pieces around the base but for this episode we're going to saddle up viola and i'm going to put a bed in viola's inventory so that we can sleep if we need to on this journey and i think the first thing i'm going to need to do actually is craft a boat because we'll need to head down river now i have a habit of calling some of the hills around here mountains just by shorthand and i think that's probably a habit that i've developed from playing minecraft for the longest time when mountains weren't really a feature there were things called extreme hills which ended up getting renamed to mountains at some stage because extreme hills is a bit of a silly name i think but at one of minecraft's previous live events where they announced the theme of a future update they also allowed the community to vote on which biomes would be changed in future and mountains won that vote and that's really what led to the caves and cliffs update being a thing at all because they decided if we're going to have a massive cave update we might as well update mountains at the same time and change the terrain of the entire world and so that's really what we're looking at right now and this right here this river valley is pretty steep so on either side we kind of have a little bit of mountainous terrain and over here actually if i can get up on top of this tree whoa viola there we go steady on girl now we have a look at one of the more common mountain biomes these can kind of level out into plateaus but you see over there where the grass is that kind of like minty green color and there's a lot of flowers all in one place that is a meadow biome so let's hop on down here let's get viola across the river and let's ride up into the highlands to take a look at the meadow biome in person there we go we're onto the plateau took us a couple of jumps but we got there and if we weave our way through this birch forest we should emerge onto the meadow and isn't it beautiful very alpine very kind of sound of music kind of vibes the whole way around so in meadow biomes you'll find a great deal of flowers everywhere and it's usually just one or two types of flowers but each section of the meadow can have its own kind of monoculture of sorts and over there you can see a bunch of alliums growing up which is actually our first chance to get a look at alliums there are a bunch of different flowers in the game all of which will produce different colors of dye and alliums will give you a magenta kind of color normally before this you'd only ever see them in flower forests. Viola is wandering off getting a little bit familiar with the meadow and we should be careful not to get her confused with the local donkeys who will actually spawn up here in a similar way to how horses spawn in plains and savanna biomes. You'll also find rabbits hopping amongst the flowers of a meadow. There's one over there although it's kind of laying low right now. There we go. There's another one hopping around and sheep should spawn up here as well. So there's a few different mobs you can expect to find here if you're looking for specific things especially over here the rabbits you'll still find caves occasionally in the meadow biome peaks which is why this zombie is now walking out and burning in the sun so it's always worth keeping your eyes peeled for those and if we ride over here to the peak of the meadow we'll be able to see a good distance around us and that pretty much confirms that there aren't too many other mountainous landscapes in this area although our render distance is still down at 16 chunks we could up it a little bit if we wanted to see a little further so not every biome that reaches this high into the world has to be a meadow but we're up pretty 
pretty high right now. We're at about Y120 sat here on Viola's back, of course, giving us a little bit of extra height, but you will find that meadow plateaus usually occur around this sort of height, and you'll find that plateaus like this can generate on their own without being attached to taller mountain biomes, because there are a variety of mountain biomes that we'll find as we explore the world, including some which can reach all the way up to Y256, which used to be the world height limit before it got increased for this update to allow people to build on top of the new taller mountains. We're going to sleep for the night here in the meadow and in the morning we're going to grab a dandelion. Because one of the tricks to keeping hold of rabbits, as with other mobs, is to hold up their favourite food. And rabbits' favourite foods are of course carrots, <laughs> no surprises there, but also dandelions. So if we ride back down here and we take a look at some of these rabbits that are hopping around, you'll see that with the dandelion in my hand, the rabbits will happily hop right up to me. If I take the dandelion out of my hand, they'll go into a panic and run away pretty quickly. So dandelions are the key if you're out here in the wild trying to get hold of some rabbits. Even though we're up here in the highlands, meadow biomes are not exempt from rain, unfortunately, so it doesn't quite get high enough for it to turn into snow, but we are getting rained on a little bit here. So why do we want to deal with rabbits in the first place. And what's the deal with the two different sizes? Well, of course, these are baby rabbits, so they're going to grow up into the larger sizes, but you do need to make sure that you're dealing with a larger rabbit if you want to attack it. <laughs> and of course, they scatter as soon as I take the dandelion out of my hand. Well, one way we can get around that is if we hold the dandelion in our offhand, because then we can still hold a sword in our main hand, and the poor rabbits are going to be chopped pretty quickly. And when the rabbit hops up to us, we can attack it with a sword. And thankfully, we only have to kill one rabbit, because it's dropped all of the possible things a rabbit could drop. So there we go. Sorry, folks, had to do it. We get raw rabbit from that. We get rabbit hide, which you might have noticed some of the leather workers asking for in their trades. And we also get a rabbit's foot, which doesn't give you any extra luck for having it in your inventory, but it is an ingredient for brewing potions. We can use a rabbit's foot to brew potions of jump boost, which allow us to jump higher. Rabbit hides don't have any special uses in the game yet. In future, they may be used to craft an item called a bundle, but that's not actually in the game yet. That was just a feature that was announced a while ago and has unfortunately been left out of this update and the next update. So we won't be seeing rabbit hide uses for a little while. You can craft four rabbit hide in your crafting interface into a single piece of leather, but when leather is already abundant from cows, you don't don't really need to take that step. We'll grab a little bit of stone from down here so that I can make myself a furnace, something that I neglected to bring with me on this trip. And that way I can show you that the raw rabbit can, of course, be cooked. When we turn it into cooked rabbit, it becomes an ingredient for rabbit stew, which you may remember the butchers trading us when we were looking at villager trades, or we can just eat it outright as part of our usual balanced diet. Rabbits aren't only found in meadow biomes, though you can also find different variants of rabbits in different biomes around the world. Deserts and snow plains are some of the areas you'll encounter them most frequently because other types of passive mobs don't tend to spawn there. But right now I haven't found a desert or a snow plains, so this is kind of my first opportunity to show you the rabbits. Now if memory serves before it started raining, I'm pretty sure this way was south, so I'm going to continue heading south on Viola. We're going to leave the meadows behind because they don't have much else to offer us, although we'll probably come back here in future to get an advancement for playing a music disc in a meadow, so look out for that one in a future episode. For now I think we'll continue riding south, and we'll see if we encounter any other mountainous terrain in the nearby area. As we ride a little further south, it looks like this area opens out onto a plains. We've still got some hilly terrain around here, but nothing too spectacular yet. Having slept for the night and finally got rid of the rain, there's some pretty cool looking caves coming up. We've got a bit of a ravine here though, so I need to be slightly careful getting around that, and Viola thinks the same, but yeah, we've got this really cool looking rock formation, which doesn't seem like a particularly deep cave unless it goes down into the earth here. It's just got this spire of rock in the center that looks pretty impressive. Oh wait, it does go down into the earth, but over here on the side, and wow, that looks like a pretty deep cave carver. Interesting. Well, there's a couple of bees floating around up there, and that might indicate the presence of a meadow, because you remember from the bees episode I mentioned that meadow biomes have these lone trees which usually have a bee nest on them. That's probably an indication that up at the top of that plateau a meadow biome begins, or occasionally you will find bee nests out here on those individual oak trees in the plains biomes as well. But yeah, just riding up here there's a bunch of cornflowers. I can tell that we're in meadow biome territory once again. Yeah, the donkeys, the donkeys, the sheep, the rabbits, pretty much all give it away. And it looks like this 
kind of hilly range continues around here, which is pretty cool. It seems to be bordered by the ocean on this side. I'm kind of getting a feel for the lay of the land around here as well, which is kind of nice if we want to plan future build projects around areas like this. A little ocean inlet kind of turns into an island right there. That might be an interesting thing to build on. And we have a sunflower plains down here as well. Sunflowers are kind of worth taking with us. They are the two block tall yellow flowers of the game. We can turn these into two yellow dye and we could even replant them and bone meal them to get a few more sunflowers. So worth taking with us. And I'll probably put this one in Viola's pack along with the dandelions. Oh, but in the distance, this has just started to fade into view. And this is what I'm talking about. We are looking at our first real mountains and it looks like they are fading in in the background. Right, I need to be a little bit careful as we traverse around here. I might take to the ocean so we can see this from sea level because there's a chance that this range is going to look pretty spectacular. Well, there it is, my friends. It's a little bit further away at this point, so we are looking at it in the render distance, but that is our first frozen peaks biome, and over here on the left-hand side, we also have a grove biome. You'll notice the full snow blocks up there amongst the spruce trees. Kind of looks like a tiger biome, but even more snowy, and with full snow blocks around there, that is an indication that it's a grove biome. We want to explore both of these, I think, so we'll probably park up Viola and go up on foot, because there's a chance we might need to tread carefully. Now before we ascend the summit of this majestic peak and find out what on earth is lurking in the cave, there's a goat! There's a goat over there! Oh my goodness! Okay, well we'll have to take things one step at a time, and I think we're going to summit this mountain a little bit later. First of all, we're going to head up to this grove biome, and the first thing I'm going to do, actually, is check in the local area to see if we can find any cows, because I'll need to get hold of some leather for this. And naturally I'm finding every animal but cows. I'm finding sheep, I'm finding pigs, <laughs> I'm not finding any cows anywhere. So in the end I decided to leave Viola over there, backtrack to the sunflower plains where I'd last seen a couple of cows, and we're just going to take out a couple of these, hopefully get enough leather. Yes, there we go, we have four leather. So we're going to use that to craft some leather boots, which are going to make it slightly easier going up on the snowier slopes of that grove. But we'll head back there first, and I'll explain explain what I mean. And for those of you who are exploring this world yourselves, these mountain biomes are about 2,000 blocks south of spawn, so this has been quite a journey, but our journey is really just beginning. Let's hop up the side of this hill. This would be kind of rough going with Viola because of the amount of trees, and we'll step out into an area on the lower slopes of this snowy grove, and we'll see these snow blocks all around us everywhere. These we can actually shovel up and they turn into snowballs, and from there we can either throw the snowballs, which is not going to do any damage to anything except some of the more fiery enemies like blazes, but it does have a couple of other uses. We can also craft the snowballs back into snow blocks, and if we had a silk touch shovel instead of a fortune shovel, we'd be able to get the snow blocks themselves. We'd also be able to pick up the snow layers around here, which can be destroyed with a regular shovel for one snowball each. But if you get hold of three snow blocks and you convert those into like a slab formation you end up with six snow layers which you can place on the ground and even pile up with each snow layer taking up an eighth of a block like that so you can create some quite interesting and dynamic snow formations and this is our first time really encountering snow so it's kind of cool to see it in person <laughs> Now when you're traversing a snowy area like this though, it pays to be a little careful because there are some blocks around here which are powder snow. Powder snow is a little bit more dangerous than the regular snow blocks because you can become trapped in it and fall through it and at that stage it really helps to have the right kind of footwear. Now in this case it seems like we've got kind of lucky or unlucky considering I wanted to demonstrate this. We don't have a whole lot of powder snow but you see this bee here? <laughs> you see how it was kind of sunk into the block? That is an indication that in front of us is some powder snow. There is a very subtle texture change between powder snow and the regular snow blocks, and we'll try and zoom in here, but it's really quite difficult to take a good look at it. Basically, the powder snow blocks have a slightly more pixelated texture than the regular snow. Regular snow is very white, very kind of clean, and powder snow just looks a little bit more grainy. What happens when you walk onto powder snow, though, is that you will sink into it, and you'll notice this frosty vignette starts to creep in, your field of view shifts a little bit, and suddenly your hearts will freeze over and you'll start to take a little bit of frost damage. So powder snow is actually a trap block that you can sink into, and if there is a deep enough drift of it, you find yourself sinking into the blocks entirely. Once your hearts freeze over like that, you will start to take 
a point or two of damage similar to drowning or being set on fire, just a little bit slower. There are a couple of ways around this. Of course, you can dig your way out, and by shoveling a block of powdered snow, it will break and not drop any snowballs, which is another great way of testing for it if you're worried you might get stuck in a snowdrift. It's a little bit difficult to escape, though, as you can see, so you'll have to shovel yourself a little quickly if you want to make sure you can get out. Another way is to pour a bucket of water in the area, because water will destroy blocks of powdered snow. As you saw there, it destroyed a few of them, and it might even destroy some blocks further down the slope as it just pours its way down there. It might be a little bit awkward, you might end up pouring the water all over yourself in your attempt to escape, but it's a good method if you've got a bucket of water on hand to escape freezing to death in a powdered snow trap. If you have an empty bucket with no water in it whatsoever, it's also possible to pick up a block of powdered snow in a bucket. You can't obtain it using silk touch or obtain it in the traditional sense by just mining it with a tool. You have to collect powdered snow in a bucket. And like other substances in buckets, it can only occupy one inventory space. You can't stack it at all. So you'll find that moving powder snow around is a little bit of a task and we'll look into ways we can farm powder snow in future so that it's easier to get hold of a lot more of it. But the final thing you can do is wear leather boots. And with leather boots, you'll still walk into the powdered snow, but they keep you warm enough that you don't have to worry about it. In fact, you can even rise up through powdered snow if you're wearing leather boots, and you'll get an advancement for walking on the surface of powdered snow with leather. You get the light as a rabbit advancement. Because leather boots are a safe way of traversing these environments, and if we end up in a snowdrift like this, you'll see that my vision is gone completely, but if we hold the jump button, we'll rise up to the surface the same way we do with skin scaffolding or in water or anything like that. It's also possible to hold shift and go down into the powdered snowdrift so you can see exactly how deep it goes and in some cases like this you'll end up in a cave. Probably not a good idea to do that though because chances are the cave might be a lot deeper than you expect and I'm very lucky that I've only fallen through into a four or five block space. That wasn't planned at all by the way so incredibly happy that I didn't end up falling to my death here. Placing a torch in here you'll notice has started to melt the snow layers around here and snow layers will melt if they're exposed to adequate amounts of block light. We should be able to hop our way out of here if we make our way up into the powder snow and there we go we can just hold the jump button so we're out and I think we're probably going to sleep here for the night. <laughs> Cold though it may be, hopefully our bed is warm enough that we can sleep. Powder snow also has a different kind of sound when you walk on it, which is one way of detecting that it's there. Another way I've found of detecting powder snow is to look for the presence of snow layers, which aside from underneath trees where snow layers won't form at all because the tree has caught all of them as they generated, you'll find that snow layers do not form on top of powdered snow. So it's usually a good idea to stay on the areas which are occupied by snow layers, and if you spot an area where the layers start to disappear, like an edge like this, then you might be walking out onto powdered snow if you're not walking underneath a tree, and that's where you need to watch out. The water source I placed down here so that I could pick up the powdered snow has turned into ice, and I'm actually going to silk touch that because we can get it as a block of ice if we want to, and I'm going to take a bucket of powdered snow home with us as a reminder that we can come back and get this from around here, but really good to have encountered powdered snow here in the grove biome, you'll also probably find find it in the snowy slopes biomes that you'll typically see on the run up to a really tall mountain. Aside from the dangers of powder snow, grove biomes are pretty much like other spruce forests. You'll find rabbits and wolves running around in here. You'll also occasionally find red foxes in these biomes, which we haven't really encountered in great quantities yet, but we'll look at those a little bit later in the series as well. There's plenty of spruce wood around, so you can grab some wood if you don't have spruce already, or if you need a little bit of extra wood for your journey. But from here, I think we're probably going to step down from this snowy biome and head towards another one. We have some snowy slopes over there, on the other reaches of the mountain going up into a meadow and from there we go up to our first frozen peak. Now it is very likely that there is more powdered snow on the way up here, so I'm going to keep my leather boots on for the duration, I think. But bear in mind that they don't have the same enchantments that some of our other boots had, so it's probably worth bearing that in mind. Oh, now you're talking. We've just encountered one of the other perks of exploring mountain biomes. You'll see up there, there is an ore block that we have never encountered before. That right there is emerald ore. 
And I'm glad that we encountered this after we encountered a village, because emerald ore, if broken, can be broken down into emeralds, naturally, and that'll get you some more currency for trading with villagers. But at this point in the series, we understand that emeralds can be freely traded from villagers, and we can even sell them as cheap things as sticks or string in order to get emeralds. So frankly, I don't go in for fortuning emerald ore all that much. I like to silk touch it so that you can keep hold of the block to build with. It feels more unique having the block itself than having the items from emerald mining. It's a personal preference thing, but I'm probably going to silk touch any emerald ore that I find around here. Now this is a majestic mountain peak. This is a frozen peaks biome where a couple of mobs are actually braving the frozen peak by wandering up from the local meadows. And as we saw from a distance, we might meet some mountain goats up here. Yes, there is one right there. And oh, a ruined portal down there on the plains. So mountain goats are funny little mobs. They tend to like hanging out on these hillsides. They can jump incredibly high, which allows them to navigate these peaks with ease. And they are mischievous as well. So if we happen to stumble upon a herd of goats like this, they will lower their heads and if you stand still for long enough, they will typically try to ram you. I'm going to try and demonstrate this without being thrown off the mountain. So if we hang around this goat for a little while longer, it's going to lower its head just to check us out. And goats can be bred using wheat as well, so they might be interested in breeding while we're up here, although I don't have any wheat on me at the time. Goats can also be milked if you're short on milk and you need to get some milk in a hurry. You can't find any cows like I couldn't earlier. You can always milk the goats if you need a little top up. The goats don't seem that interested in ramming me, and to be honest, I'm fine with that. Up here on the peak, we can see for a great distance around us, and we are at Y169 right now, so not even the tallest peak, actually a fairly modest mountain peak, this one, but... As you can see, we are surrounded by ice blocks that look a little different from the ice block that I gathered earlier on. This one has a little bit more transparency to it and is simply ice, whereas the stuff around us, I believe, if we break it with our Silk Touch pickaxe, is packed ice. There we go. So we have a little bit of packed ice around us here and we can grab some snow blocks from the surroundings as well. Packed ice can actually be crafted if you have a bunch of regular ice. You can craft it into a 3x3 crafting interface to get packed ice. As you can tell from how I'm sliding around a little bit, ice is a slippery block and we can use that for all sorts of cool stuff a little bit later on. No pun intended. I'm going to grab a little bit of the ice where I can and you'll notice it even sneaks down into the cave openings here and there. So you'll find that the ice and snow continue down into mountainside caves where the world generation has carved a cave into the side of these. Well, if the local goats aren't going to throw me off the mountain, we can at least have a little bit more fun with them, because if we put a boat down near here for this goat to walk into, yes, there we go, we can get an advancement for getting in a boat with a goat. <laughs> the whatever floats your goat advancement, which is always kind of fun just for the puns alone. Now we can get him out of the boat. Oh, we ended up hitting the goat there. Oh no! Oh, we ended up killing the goat. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't hit the boat from the right angle there because that sheep had gotten into it. So we ended up killing the goat. But that at least is a good illustration of the fact that goats don't really drop anything right now. So while you can breed goats, they're not really all that useful to the player. They don't really provide food in the same way that other animals do. So we can use them for fun stuff later, like the ramming behavior that they have can be kind of fun to mess around with. But frankly, we don't need to do too much with the goats right now. On the subject of goats, though, there is a very small chance for one of the goats we find to be a screaming goat. <laughs> yes, the goats do occasionally scream a little bit louder than their average bleats, and those goats will be even more mischievous than their regular counterparts, and they will ram you a lot more frequently. So chances are if we find those, we can end up breeding some more screaming goats and using them in a mob farm or something like that if we want to have some mobs thrown around a little bit by these goats. But I think for now we'll leave them be, and if we want to return to the goats in future than we can. I'm going to make my way carefully down this mountain and back into the relative piece of this meadow biome so that I can go and check out the ruined portal over here and see what's up. Hmm, let's see what we've got in here. A little bit of obsidian. All right, I don't mind tucking that one away for another nether portal some other time, but it doesn't seem like we have any extra gold blocks or anything like that around here, so probably best if we leave it alone for now. So our majestic mountain peaks here have been conquered and honestly weren't the largest example of mountains I have seen. We will probably look around a little bit more to see if we can find something bigger, but for now, it's good that we've at least found one of these frozen peak biomes. There are three different kinds of peaks to mountains depending on the temperature of the surrounding biomes. So naturally around here we've got meadow biomes which are naturally a little bit more cold and we're in a plains biome around here the rest of the time so that's formed 
a frozen peak here. There is a potential for jagged peaks to form, and these look kind of jagged on their own, but the jagged peaks will be made out of stone and they'll come to a lot of different points in a single range of mountains, so there's a lot of really cool variation in some of those. And finally, there is a stony peaks biome, where the summit is much more likely to be made out of stone and other materials like granite and diorite than it is to be covered in ice and snow. And typically you will find those in the warmer biomes, where the game has generated a mountain in the middle of savanna terrain or deserts or anything like that. I gotta say, this cave over here looks pretty special, though I like the fact this waterfall is running down over this stone outcropping, and I do want to dip my head into the cave here just in case there's anything cool going on, and it looks like an enderman is just making his way around here as well. There's... oh, it does look like it leads downwards into the mountain. And we got a couple of mobs running around here. We got a skeleton. The enderman over here is just biding his time. And it does look like we can go into the mountain to explore a little bit more. So this is kind of exciting. You can see the drifts of snow coming in from the outside there as well. So in mountain biomes, typically you'll find them generating in higher areas of terrain, of course. You will typically find a lot more iron ore generating the further up in the world that you go. So it's fairly natural to find pretty large veins of iron and coal around here, along with a few more of those emerald ore blocks like we saw from the outside. These mountainous biomes, whether it's a peak like this or the meadows outside or one of the groves over there as well, these are the only biomes where you can find those emerald ore blocks, making them one of the rarer ore blocks if not necessarily in how many of them generate, just by the fact that they are limited to this small range of biomes. And technically speaking, with the exception of occasional interruptions by lush caves and dripstone caves, a biome will continue from the height of the world all the way down to the bottom of the world. So you'll find that even if you dig down to deep slate level in this biome, it's still technically counting it as a meadow or a, s a snowy slopes or a frosty peaks or something like that, even when you get down to the lower regions of the world. And so you might still find emerald ore down there, even though you're not technically anywhere near the summit of the mountain. And we're not going to worry about going caving here right now, but I think we'll be back to this mountain in future to see what else we can find. For now, though, I think we're probably going to wrap this episode up here. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck finding some of those mountains in your own worlds. For now, thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.